to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, brought to you by the experts at Maryfield Garden Center. Join us as we discover beautiful plants, new trends, and exciting ideas for your landscape. So let's get growing together. Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, bringing out the best in your garden. Good morning, everyone. So glad you could join us today here on Mary Fields Gardening Advisor. Good morning, Peg. How are you? And good morning, everybody. It's nice to, <laughs> nice to see you all. We've, we've all been kind of flipping, you know, different, uh, taking different times off and that type of thing. That's so we've right. been uh, kind of all over the place. So it's now nice, we have to nice to be here with you. Settle down. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, we, you know, it's Labor Day weekend. Happy Labor Day weekend, uh, which is kind of the kick off for fall so we're about to start a brand new season an exciting new season especially mm -hmm. in the garden so we're going to uh, start you off in a yummy way we are we're going to talk about vegetables vegetables for fall and uh, it's the best possible time to grow these vegetables because these are things that like to grow off cool mm -hmm. and and we really had a good time to get them settled in but we it's good to start with transplants of some of these things and we've got a lot of them in get them in as soon as possible and and you'll have great results mm -hmm. yes um and today actually i'm really going to try to convince you to not just plant in neat rows right. But to mix these right. things within your Eat own garden. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool gardening for so the cool season. So we're right? going to talk about growing organic, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about eating healthy, and how you can make it beautiful in the process. All right. Well, that's great. All the above. And we will be taking your phone calls later on in the show, so stay tuned for that as well. Yeah, let's let's give a little. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of Good pictures. Idea. Let's bring those up just to get you inspired mm -hmm. and hope you'll stay with us. Actually, I took this picture a while back, somebody else's garden, and and it shows a lot going on here, and this is just a small space within a perennial garden. Mm -hmm. And yet I can see kale, I can see cabbage, I can see uh, the end of the green beans for the summer. There's, there's just a lot there. And so you don't have to have a huge That's garden, right. and yet it's very attractive. And what are you going to get from this? Ta-da! Broccoli cabbage, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, kale, kohlrabi. I've never grown kohlrabi. I really should try that. I don't know that. that I've ever eaten kohlrabi, to be I'm honest. I'm not sure that I have either. <laughs> so, there's always something new to try. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, we're going to talk about that today. We are. So, we're going to get you started with your fall vegetable garden. So, whether it be a big garden or whether it be some Just small a little, little pots in Or here. in containers. That's right. That's right. Anything goes. Sky's the limit. That's for sure. A <laughs> couple of quick announcements before we get started. Labor Day this weekend. We will be open at Maryfield Garden Center on Labor Day Monday, but we'll be closing a little early. So we'll be open from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. rather than our normal 8 p.m. So just uh, closing a little bit early, but if you're going to a Labor Day party or you're having a Labor Day party, you know, and, and you want to stop by and grab some beautiful, we've got fresh, mums. gorgeous mums, <laughs> annuals, pansies. We've got a little bit of everything in. Yeah. And it's we just, can. it's fully stocked and, you know, you'll find something beautiful to either decorate with or take as a hostess gift, which is always a nice thing to do. So 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Monday. Um, Roseanne asked me to remind everybody that, you know, we've been talking about our tent sale, you know, mm -hmm. all summer, which it pretty much goes on most of the summer, which is great. And it's different every week. Well, I think this is the longest it's it's gone, but this this weekend is going to be the end. That's what they that's what they've told me. So they've restocked, and so there's lots of things in there to take advantage of. These great bargains. Um, so you know, odds and ends, little things. You might find something that you can't live without. So be sure to stop by this weekend and check that out. I actually checked it out yesterday. Did you? What'd you get? What'd you get? I got a cute little <laughs> metal owl. Did you? Well, I've collected owls right. for years, mm -hmm. and. This little guy is only about this tall, and he says, wisdom. Aw. I couldn't resist. That's right. There you go. Well, like I needed different. one I more <laughs> thing. You know? But, you know, it's, it's changing every, you know, every day. Yes, so, yes they so add you, things you know, every day. You wouldn't it's have fine. seen it a couple weeks ago. So there That's you right. go. So. No. And very exciting news. Next weekend, 
our fall seminars begin at Maryfield Garden Center at all three locations. Um, here's, if, if you're on our mailing list, hopefully you got your um, seminar schedule this week. I got mine this week in the mail. Uh, so it is it not only contains all of the seminars from now through the holidays, uh, it's got some gardening tips, it's got some information on Maryfield Garden Center, and this one, if you're, if you're on our mailing list, you've got some coupons in yours as well. So, But you can stop by Maryfield Garden Center, any of our stores, and pick up a copy of the seminar schedule, or you can go to MaryfieldGardenCenter.com and uh, you can pick up the full right. schedule there. So That's good. We have a great lineup of Yes, of seminars this year. Starting next weekend, we're going to be, Le Regina Langto is going to be talking about introduction to succulents. David's going to be talking about build the, build the lawn of your dreams. And Karen Rexroad, who was here last week, uh, is going to be talking about annuals and perennials for fall. That's just the first one. That's right. You know, so Lots it more goes on and on. We've got some special guests right. coming up. We've got some of our designers coming up. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots and lots of great, mm -hmm. great topics. So take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, back to some of what we can be doing in the garden. Mm -hmm. And it's been such a pleasant oh, summer. Hasn't it? Wonderful. I could, I could take this. I know, this. I know. Uh, Talk about regular. it a little hotter next week, but Blue, you know, I, I well, guess we have yes. to have some of that in the yes, summertime. to have appreciated what we've been doing. Exactly. Through. Right. Um, there's a lot going on. Even the bulbs are coming out. Mm -hmm. We've got all these fall things. But for those of you who have never grown garlic, you really should try. The garlic are in cloves and you can pull them apart and plant them in the garden now. This is prime time to do that. Mark where you're planting it though because it is a bulb and you won't see it right away. What will happen, it will set its roots down and begin to grow, and later in the winter, you'll begin to see little sprouts come up and it'll be the foliage. And you know, the fun thing is, obviously you don't dig it at that point, you have to wait. In fact, this is a good time to harvest mm -hmm. from what you may have and then put some back in the ground to grow. But I encourage you to do this because it's fantastic to go out and harvest your own. And when you mark it, you can actually go and do it by degrees. But you can use the green shoots also hmm. to lightly flavor things. I love I to use that. one of the garlic leaves to rub the salad bowl. And oh, that's a neat idea. And it just gives a slight hint of that garlic mm -hmm. taste, okay? So we will be talking about a lot of these wonderful things, and, and I was amused because we did get in an awful lot of these. And, and by the way, we are going to talk through the show a little bit about organics. Mm -hmm. Most of our vegetables and herbs are organically grown. We, we have one company that's certified organic, and the other one that isn't. So you have to be careful how you promote that, okay? Mm -hmm. But the neat thing is that, that uh, pesticides haven't been used on them. But I was amused that these radish have come along to such a degree. I know, look at that. That there's a radish already <laughs> can forming you get, can you get a close inside. Up of that again? Now, the wonderful thing is that you can plant these uh, radish seeds now and the kids can really enjoy harvesting mm -hmm. these. So oh, yes, that's, no. that's really, <laughs> really a fun thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're about to run out of time mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's bring up the one next picture. Because I, I took this picture last year, actually, and I've enjoyed it. <laughs> a little praying mantis who's rather a ruthless character. But anyway, um, be careful. Be careful how you use your insecticides on whatever you're doing. And, and really, we, were, we had quite a discussion about all of these this week at the garden centers between the three stores. One of the very best things that you can possibly do is if you have a problem, take a small branch or take a piece or of that problem mm -hmm. to one of our uh, plant clinics at either location. Find out what that problem really is so that you can target that mm -hmm. and not Treated spray your whole environment. Mm -hmm. Because when you kill the good guys, 
lots of bad things happen. Right. So it's good to respect the those. Mm -hmm. They do great Absolutely. things for us. Those were tent caterpillars. caterpillars. Mm -hmm. And when I, I took that picture in the early morning, and when I came back to my car in the late afternoon, there were no caterpillars <laughs> left. That praying mantis had, had, to, had a full tummy. Hungry, hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so don't kill the good guys. Right. Learn how to use your, your um, various uh, good pesticides. Okay. And, and if possible, don't even use them in your vegetable garden. Right. Okay. okay, we're gonna take a quick break and come back with more. We'll be right right back. Welcome back to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. We're pleased to have you with us today and hopefully we can encourage you if you've never grown some of these fall vegetables to do it now. A couple of weeks ago, I showed just a couple of pictures of Dumbarton Oaks. I was so impressed with their incredibly big and beautiful um, vegetable garden. And, and they had, this is asparagus, if you wonder what it looks like when it's growing. This is the foliage from that asparagus that you eat as an immature little vegetable. And then they had rows and rows of cabbage and kale and a lot of lettuce mixed into this huge area. It was very inviting. And there's a couple of others that we'll go through quickly just to show you, how, even with a large garden where it's traditionally planted in rows, how very beautiful it can be. So let's roll through just a couple of those pictures quickly. Here's a closer view where you can see the kales. They have different colors. There's purples and there's all of that in between and yellows and some of these things. How pretty it is. And the next one, please. Here, here again, you're seeing a different view. And, and what you can have along with this, they have grapes. Grapes on an arbor back here, which you can walk underneath and gives you that wonderful feeling of, of cool. Maybe it would be a good place to rest when you're working in the middle of the day in the vegetable garden. Let's go on with some of these pictures. Here, again from that garden, maybe a fall vegetable that you may never have grown, and that's Swiss chard. It's good quickly stir-fried, or it's good just in salads and it's beautiful. It has yellow stems and it has burgundy and red stems and it gets about mm, 18 inches tall. You can harvest the leaves from the bottom and, and continue to harvest over a long period of time and so it's just really beautiful. And, and continuing through this, growing things in containers, don't forget you can do that. You do a great job. This happens to be primarily herbs you can do that for fall. You can put them where they're easy to go out and pick. Or you can do fall vegetables in these things too. Lettuce particularly. And continuing. Here's the herb garden again. I think I showed you this picture earlier, but it's so beautiful I had to share it again. Herbs. This is a great time to get your herbs in too because the herbs and the vegetables go together. I use herbs a great deal to flavor various things with. Being from the Deep South originally, oh yeah, everything was fried, no more. I use herbs. And the next one. Okay, I have to go into my own garden. I don't have a big area because I don't have a lot of sunshine. This area used to be a large vegetable garden when my children were small, but it's evolved. Our gardens change with time. And there are some short rows of various things in here. But I want to point out diversity as we go along. Because the more diverse it is, the fewer insects that you will have in the garden. You really confuse them somewhat. If they can see a long row of something, they say, yay, I've got it made here. But 
if it's in small areas, and we'll talk about this more as we go through this. Let's, let's run through some of these. Here is a short row of the cabbage, the kale, and I'm trying Brussels sprouts. I've never grown Brussels sprouts before, and so I'm trying that. And look, it's mulched with pine needles, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, maintenance and taking care of this garden. And rolling on through, here I have a wonderful area of basil, which I'm still enjoying, and I've planted fresh parsley and some bunching onions there, just in a small space. Continuing, please. Okay, here are the little, there's only room for four, but you know, it produces an awful lot. This is the baby Swiss chard that I just put in last Sunday. Now, there's going to be a lot of other suggestions. We will be back in a moment with more ideas about the vegetable garden in fall. Peg's come back from our virtual garden. Welcome back. It was a long yes. trick, wasn't it? Trip, wasn't it? <laughs> a pleasant trip. That's right. You know, that's right. A pleasant trip. <laughs> I took a granddaughter, Gretchen, with me to Dumbarton Oaks. It, mm -hmm. This is a teaching thing, and, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in this segment because you spend a lifetime doing all of these things, and it's so important to share. It's important to share the love of nature and everything that's mm -hmm. going on. That's for and, sure. And reading. Uh, you know, we offering educational things, which is great. Mm -hmm. And the young people can come to these, too. Oh, absolutely. It's great. But, you know, we also are constantly being educated. Mm -hmm. And... and um, P. Allen Smith, who's a big person in the horticultural mm -hmm. world and does some radio and TV and a lot of writing. I had the joy of when we went to a big conference mm -hmm. over in the harbor to to have breakfast with a large group, right. but I happened mm -hmm. to have him sit at the table mm -hmm. where, that I was nice. at and, Very nice. and came away with a signed book. Very okay. good. Very but good. I was very pleased to see that we actually have these at the garden center and it's his seasonal recipes from the garden Yum. and he's quite good and i really enjoyed getting to know him mm -hmm. you know so these are the things that we meet and then i'm constantly reading i love to read and and we learn every day right nobody ever knows it all mm -hmm. if they do run away from them <laughs> you know and so I was very interesting because we get this Grower Talks thing, which is an in-house type of magazine that uh -huh. keeps us informed as to what's going on in the horticultural world. And I was very pleased to, to read an article here that pairs, because a lot of times, through, well, through the centuries, people have planted certain things like uh, carrots love tomatoes or mm -hmm. marigolds right. and tomatoes. But this is pairing alyssum, which is not edible, with lettuce. And they are saying that this trial was done by the USDA Agricultural Research Service and was proven that if you plant some alyssum, and this is a perfect time to do this, mm -hmm. around and among your lettuce, then the hoverflies, which will sometimes go to the lettuce, will go to the alyssum instead. And so there is a lot of fact to some of this companion mm -hmm. planting thing. I planted uh, marigolds among my tomatoes. And does it work? I don't know, you know. But I do know that I enjoyed it, mm -hmm. and and it was beautiful. It pretties up the garden. It was okay. very nice, you know, and and so and actually marigolds are edible. The alyssum, as far as I know, is not. <laughs> but it's an incredibly fragrant thing. It's it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, I do have some other photos to share, okay. if I may, and if we can roll through these. Um, I want to stress again this this is a, a picture that I took last Sunday in my own garden. I do want to stress the diversity. 
I have enjoyed, is it a perfect place? No, it is not. Um, but I have a tremendous mix of things in this area. I have a lot of perennials. I have bulbs in the spring. I have a lot of herbs. There are some small shrubs. There's boxwood. I've got to have boxwood. And then there is interspersed all of these tomatoes within, I mean, tomatoes, right. <laughs> Vegetables within their season. Mm -hmm. Now, this, we enjoy my garden mm -hmm. um, as a group. Including and your family enjoys your garden. And, and I, I just wanted to share some of those pictures because I am a believer that it is important to teach the young and the kids have grown up here. And much of the TV shows that I've done have happened in this garden. Debbie's been in my mm -hmm. garden many times. She <laughs> knows it almost as well as I do. And actually, this is my oldest granddaughter, Bridget, working with her little brother, who is the youngest grandchild. And they're picking green beans. This is a row of green beans that's probably about no more than eight feet long. Mm -hmm. And what a production. And the incredible thing is, this summer, I did not have one bean beetle. Wow. So I was impressed. And then they stepped over, because there was quite a crew back here. We always, when we're together, which is fairly often, um, go back through the garden, take walks through the garden. We do the the smell and the taste mm -hmm. test. They'll eat a nasturtium, or uh, Eamon particularly loves the fennel seeds. Well, because Eamon's, they're your, so Eamon's your, great. your I think he's going to be gardener. A true gardener. And there's yes. Rose in that picture, too. And Rose is here, and they're <coughs> actually harvesting things for dinner. We're, mm -hmm. we're going to That's have dinner. Great. And they're looking over the jalapenos, and because uh, Bridget whipped up a wonderful dish that needed jalapenos, and they were there. All right. Which is great. And I, I loved the next one, and I had to share this because it's so wonderful <laughs> to see the young That's get so excited cute. about something besides a tablet. Right. You know? <laughs> or a video game. And so there, <laughs> he looked up and he saw something that really intrigued him. And in the next picture, you'll see what that was. He realized that there were apples on the little espaliered apple trees. <laughs> and so he climbed the fence grabbed his apple and promptly ate it. Oh, <laughs> good for him. Now, uh, when you're growing organically, things aren't as perfect right. sometimes. And and that apple certainly wasn't, mm -hmm. but it didn't have any worms in it. That's right. <laughs> you didn't I remember to eat the, around the worm. As a kid, we had an apple tree in the front yard, and I remember going and picking picking those apples. They weren't maybe the they, most tastiest, but they were they were still well, good. Well, they were. This was very tasty, <laughs> uh -huh. but but they're not always shaped as right. perfectly, and so sometimes you just have to accept things that are not quite perfect. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's improving every day. Right. All of these things that are done uh, organically. Now, do we have time to share? We have something? about thirty seconds. Well, we got to share. Okay, give or take. Stephanie, <laughs> at our Fair Oaks location, <clears throat> is a wonderful young woman, mm -hmm. and she's doing such a good job, and she gets so excited she about what excited. she's doing, and. I think every square inch of her front and backyard, which is small, is planted with mm -hmm. something. And a lot of it is vegetables. And she had a good harvest. She's and been she canning. talked to me about canning and I discussed with her some of the things that we always did mm -hmm. and to make things easy. She came up with a delicious um, and canned about eight jars of this and she was like a so salsa? it's it's actually a spaghetti sauce oh wow mm -hmm. now if you hold the camera right there still okay that's all right you can come back <laughs> and then the fun thing was when i was leaving yesterday david Jost came out and said oh peg you may want to share these because one of our customers mm -hmm. brought these every in mm -hmm. and he does every year mm -hmm. he had made pickles these are bread and butter pickles i'll hold that while you i have made mm -hmm. 
many, many, many a bread and butter pickle <laughs> in my lifetime. In fact, the Warhurst and beers used to can and corn. do all that. A lot Remember of our corn, corn all corn, night uh, long venture capers. <laughs> <laughs> and he had also done a primarily a basil sauce. Nice. Mm -hmm. So there's so many things you can do. That's great. And and I personally got a great deal of joy out of the fact that Stephanie, who has never done anything like that in her life, mm -hmm. did such a good job. She's so really I, it. I want to, to me, <coughs> one of the most important things that we can do is share the love of nature right. and plants and particularly right now while we're all thinking <coughs> so much about organic gardening, mm -hmm. how important it is. That's right. So share with everybody. Share. Share. Share, share, share my share. sister. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. We're talking about all these yummy vegetables and how you can have them at your fingertips. As you as you said, you were ready to have dinner and you just went out and picked and, what you and needed. And did it, yes. So, but but mm -hmm. how do we get those to that's, come the best? That's you know, very the important. Best and and granted, in one short segment, we can't okay. share the whole world with you. But one thing that is important is good soil. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been in the same place far longer than most people <laughs> ever stay sure. in one place. Okay. And the soil is good. In early years, I rototilled. I have not done that for many, many years. And that's a good thing. Because when you put organic material, particularly leaf compost and so forth, the worms and other things do the work for you. And then as you make your holes and plant your plants, I never do that with adding a little fresh stuff as I go. So mm -hmm. you're constantly improving right. the soil, okay? If you're just beginning and you've got primarily clay, you've got to be sure of your drainage to be sure the drainage is good. But you add organic materials. Compost your leaves. Don't haul them out into the trash. I do mine, I'd say the easy way, but there's no easy way when you've got as many as I do. <laughs> but I, I don't do bins or whatever. I just do them loosely and mm -hmm. turn them a couple of times during the season. You, if you don't have that, leaf grow, composted leaves mm -hmm. is available in bags. But you will find a lot of organic products available on the market today, whether it's Good Earth or right. so many different ones. I couldn't bring all those bags, okay? And then after you've considered your soil, consider the fertilization. There's been many studies done, and, and I'm a believer in this, that um, using organic fertilizers wherever possible is a very good idea particularly in the vegetable mm -hmm. garden, because uh, there's a support system going on there mm -hmm. uh, in, in, within the soil, and you're improving the soil. Now, I did bring a few things. I'm really, really stuck on some of these Espoma I products. Up for you. Mm -hmm. But you know, you, it doesn't have to be Espoma. Again, there's a, then that may not show up very well. So let's just tell them that this is mm -hmm. organic garden tone, okay. which is a slightly different formulation, not much different than plant tone, which I use on just about everything. I I, it's garden gypsum is calcium, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. There's green sand, which they say is great, and I believe it and use it all the time. <laughs> you know? And then there's rock phosphate. There's a lot of things said about phosphates, mm -hmm. and a lot of things have been restricted now. Right. But Rock phosphate is not processed, highly processed. Okay. And so it stays in the soil, doesn't wash away, and these are long term, slow feed things. And they're good for all those little organisms that are running around in your soil. Mm -hmm. I do, I, I, the, the other thing, and I don't want to forget it, is the importance of pH. Good point. A lot here yeah, in this immediate metropolitan area mm -hmm. is primarily uh, on the acidic side, but there are parts where it can be alkaline. Mm -hmm. We have these little kits that you can send it out and, and do all kinds of tests. However, 
if you just have time to figure out what is the pH, is it more acidic or more alkaline, mm -hmm. you can bring a decent amount, a quart, let's say, or close to that, right. of your soil into the garden center and we can do a quick pH test, okay, which is very important. Mm -hmm. Most of these vegetables, there are exceptions, potatoes for instance, that are very happy in that sort of up to 6.5 range, can be a little bit above that, but mm -hmm. that's a good range for a lot of these things. Okay. Now, how do I take care of this without, because I have a large area mm -hmm. and I, I can't take <coughs> care of right. all of it. And I don't mind weeding a little bit. I weed but a lot. But you don't have to. <laughs> but I try to prevent to. it. So let's let's see how we do this, okay? Mulching. I mulch wherever possible. And as long as there are not bulbs under there that come up in the spring, I, between some of these rows and plants, I use several layers of newspaper, put a little bit of uh, Virginia Fines bark on top, and then cap it off with the pine straw. The pine straw for me is just nostalgic and mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Right. And it keeps the vegetables very clean. And then the next one, I've got to go through these quickly because mm -hmm. we've got some phone calls. Row cover. You can use row cover now and the sun goes through and the rain goes through. But the animal, the animals, yeah, that yeah. too, the, <laughs> the rabbits, mm -hmm. if you want to protect these things, you can do it now to protect them, or you can do it later on the other end when we have heavy frost. Most of these things like cold weather, but if you get a heavy frost, you can drape it down, and you can see that I'd held that down with some staples. Mm -hmm. Now, another fun thing to share. Many years ago, this looks familiar, your father, <laughs> Bob Worst designed this tomato cage. It's made in two parts. His original idea was you'd be able to put this around an established plant. Right. All right. It's a great tomato cage. Opened up and hooked together, it's a great one for vines. You can grow mm -hmm. beans, you can grow <clears throat> cucumbers and all kinds of things. All right. I have a deer issue. I use Bob X, thank goodness, but I also, when the tomatoes are finished, take this apart and put it around some of my favored small trees and shrubs because the deer at the end of September, the end of November, will rub. And why do they know the most expensive plant? I don't know. Yeah, I've never figured that out, but they but do. They do. <laughs> so they're useful for that. But <clears throat> you can turn that sideways over your lettuce or over your cabbage mm -hmm. or whatever, particularly at the end of the season when it's getting cold, cover it with that frost cloth and you've got a protective That's tunnel great. that may take your food past wow. Christmas, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, so quickly, go. Get, it's time to get those um, herbs in, get in those vegetables, and with the next picture, I can tell you, you will have... Yum the satisfaction mm -hmm. of an organic harvest. That's wonderful. Well, we hope you, we've inspired you. <laughs> we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna take your phone calls. So if you have any questions on the fall vegetable garden right. or any gardening questions, give us a call. 703-387-1046. We'll be right back. There was our number, 703-380-1746. And our first caller is Jean, who's calling from Silver Spring. Hi, Jean. Good morning. Are you there? Your show very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. What can we do for you today? I'd like to know when would be a safe time for me to move uh, several Japanese maples that I have in my yard now, and my son wants mm -hmm. to put them in the yard of his new house. Uh -huh. Oh, that, now <laughs> see, that's Sherry. There you go. Obviously, yeah. your son learned to love Japanese <laughs> maples. Oh, yes, they are. They're beautiful. <laughs> I have an affection for those and many of them also. Um, actually, prime time, as far as I'm concerned, to move those Japanese maple around is as they've lost their leaves. No, oh, after they've lost their leaves? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Uh, well, okay. you, know, you know what? It, it's okay. 
because they've stopped uh, growing particularly right now. Um, if you can wait two or three weeks, that would be great, but the world won't come to an end usually with them if you have already done it or are going to do it, you know, because they're going dormant soon anyway. Okay, so I could possibly move them now? Uh, yes, you could. Ideal time would be when they lose their leaves, okay? okay. Hopefully that these aren't huge, right? They're not, they're not about five feet. Okay, just go out from the center uh, stem uh -huh. at, at least, mm, what, a foot and a half beyond around the bigger the and and the use some burlap to move it mm -hmm. try not to break up the root ball okay. and actually Japanese maple are much much easier to deal with than people think so good luck to you Jean well thank you very much you've thank been very you. helpful thanks have a great weekend bye-bye bye-bye you thank thanks. you thanks okay our next caller is Tina who's calling from Washington DC hi Tina Good morning, ladies. Good morning. I just morning. love your show. Thank, thank, thank you. you so much for it. Aww. My question is, I, I just put some seeds in the ground. I put Swiss chard, spinach, kale, and collards. So mm -hmm. is it going to grow enough for me to eat during the winter, or do I have to wait until the spring? Hopefully they'll all do okay. I prefer to go ahead and put in the transplants now. You'd be surprised. You should have started two or three weeks ago with the cabbage and the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts. But those things that you just mentioned should be okay, right? I, did, and, and I, I put them in about two weeks ago. Oh, so. then you're perfect. You should get great production out of those. Oh, and really? the thing of it is, to do the seeds may give you two crops. And if you've got a lettuce, go ahead and plant some now. Say, you know, just put a small amount and then some more in two weeks and more in two weeks. You can have a long, long um, harvest time from that. So, Do I need to put the covering thing over them that you were talking about? Well, you certainly can. Or you can, let me reach down for this. I wanted to tell you earlier, and I should tell you now, organically speaking, this uh, bacillus thuringiensis, or commonly called BT, is an organic that only affects the cabbage fly or the caterpillars, okay? Cabbage oh. fly. Oh, no, and, I, I was talking about the fabric cover. Right. Just, okay. So, oh. Well, I'm giving you an alternative. Oh, okay. You can use this now. You don't have to use it on lettuce. It's a cabbage and broccoli thing, okay? Okay. You can use the covers, but it's not necessary if you don't have an insect problem, okay? Oh, okay. It's one good way to do it organically, but it's not the prettiest thing in the garden. And usually I use the BT, and um, don't worry about The lettuce usually comes through just fine. Oh. I reserve that fabric for later. <coughs> These things like cool weather. They don't mind oh. light frost. But if you want to take them through heavy frost, then you need to cover them. And that, oh. can, give you, that can give you harvest late, late in the year. Can I mulch them with straw now or wait until they oh, come up I, a little I more? I just did it, and I put it just around them. Don't cover them, okay. but do it around yeah. them, Tina. And okay. good luck to you. Ooh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's exciting. Right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You do. Too. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, our next caller is Sunita. Am I pronouncing that right? And I think you're calling from Maryfield? Sunita. 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 How are you? Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. Good. What's your question? Uh, my question is, um, well, first of all, I love your show, and uh, she looks beautiful. Uh, I love her hair up in a bun. <laughs> <laughs> and my question is, I have uh, 18 years old Japanese maple, mm -hmm. and when is the best time to trim that? Here again, prime time is when it loses its leaves and you can really see the shape of the tree. I sometimes, in fact, I've got one out front that normally I thin mine every year 
and I have one that really needs thinning and I'm very likely to climb up into that anytime now and trim out a few of those branches. Okay? I'm trying to get a mental picture of this. I, I do that. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> Not yes. a big person so I don't break the branches. Okay. <laughs> Good. And then the ground is soft there. <laughs> That's right. So it is a good time right now. <laughs> yes. Go for it, Sunita. Okay. Thanks well, that's so much about it. Thank you Thank so you. much. I watch your show every Saturday. Thank, Thank you. you. Have Say a hello weekend. when you come in. Okay. I will definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We're going to have to take a quick break, and we'll come back with more of your phone calls. Welcome back. Our next caller is Lori, who's calling, calling sorry, from Upper Marlboro. Hi, Lori. Hi, how are Good you? Great, and you? I'm doing great, doing great. Um, I'm a first-time gardener, oh, and um, in the fall, my father-in-law grows collard greens. Yes. Um, we love collard greens, but we want to get into the mustard and Hanover greens, mm -hmm. and we haven't had luck finding it. Do you know where we can find Hanover greens or mustard greens? Yeah, just and, um, take a also, wonderful trip over the to the garden center. <laughs> for uh, a garden? It, that's easy, honey. Actually, if you're if you're new at this, you probably haven't been out about and looking. There's many things that you can start from seed. There's plenty of time to do. Um, turnip greens for instance you can seed them in the garden now you can seed them again in two weeks uh, there's purple top there's the ones with white bottoms you can do a few from transplants now and then seed in later this this is very easy almost all of them can be seeded except right now you're better off to put in transplants of the broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cabbage because it takes longer for those to mature. But don't be afraid to do a few of the other things from transplants and then do some seeding also. And we do have a lot, I didn't even begin to share with you a lot of the things that we have. We have spinach, we have cabbage, we have kale. We even have bunching <laughs> onions. Now, I can tell you, this was something that my mother loved and I wasn't fond of because they were hard to clean when I was a kid. Now I have a great respect there for them. Go. Because <laughs> you can cook the tops and the little bottom. Mm -hmm. And it's, look, how, look at that, so fresh. Oh, and yes. that just chopped up and sauteed is a light fragrance. So, by all means, get out and, and investigate. So we have at you the know, garden center. We've she's got about the, all this the, stuff. The mustard greens and the we got the head. mustard. You, you, you name it, it's right. there. It's not that far drive from up in Marlboro. That's right. It's all there. <laughs> so come on over. <laughs> Thanks. Thank so you much. for calling, Lori. Have a good weekend. Okay, let's see. Our next caller is Donna, who's calling from Kensington. Are you there, Donna? Yes, I am. Good morning. Are you? Good morning. Uh, my question is, can you plant uh, herbs in the kitchen and the windowsill, and how do you keep the bugs out? Well, generally speaking, uh, because you have them inside, you're not going to have a whole lot of bugs, okay? You're going to have some, because houseplants get bugs, too. Um, and uh, depending upon what it is, uh, there are horticultural oils that can be used, but you know what I use most of the time? I grow them over the kitchen sink. Uh, rosemary, that's a bit of a challenge to grow inside. I've done very successfully. And sometimes it will have a few issues and I just take it down and spray it hard with the, the, the hose on the kitchen sink. And that will get rid of most things. So, you know, all you can do is try it and see where you go with it, you know. You can even grow basil there for short periods of time. Um, you can bring in some of your chives, for instance, and cut them. So, Donna, enjoy it and learn from the experience. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for calling. Have Thank a great day again. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see, BJ is calling from Washington, D.C. Hi, BJ. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine, and it's CJ. Oh, CJ, I'm sorry. CJ. Okay. 
<laughs> We've got okay. you wrong on the screen there, too. Sorry. <laughs> All right. My question is about uh, raised beds. I, I have some uh, raised beds, and I want to plant my, you know, my lettuce and spinach and, and, and turnips. I didn't know I could put turnips in now. Absolutely. And turnips. I want to put those in the, the raised bed because I don't have that much yard space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Raised beds are wonderful. They're just, a, it, it's like a great big container. Okay. And uh, fortunately, if they're raised enough, and if you can sit on the side of them, there, there are some of us who don't get down on our knees as easily as we used to. And it's a great way for people who can't do that, or even people in a wheelchair. <coughs> it's fantastic. Grow in raised beds, grow in containers. You just have to watch your watering, you know, but all these things apply. You mulching it, uh, light fertilization, uh, proper watering, and you got it made. Okay, now I have, my second question is about fennel. I have fennel in the ground. It started out as a small plant back in the spring, and now it's very tall yes. and it um <coughs> how do are those little seeds that are on the end because you know it kind of comes to a point where it looks like it's seeding yes how okay we we're gonna have to answer this quickly but that is such an important question without a doubt fennel is the favorite in my household and little Eamon just loves it it's like an anise thing and you can eat those seeds you can cook with those seeds you can harvest them when they're dry and save them for later fennel is a tall plant mine's at least four feet tall but it's beautiful you can harvest them for arrangements mm, great so <laughs> versatile so enjoy <coughs> your fennel that's okay. right thank yes. you so much CJ we okay. have we have right. got to Go take care. Have a wonderful okay. weekend. Sorry that we had to, to. We just run out of time so quickly. So thank you for these <laughs> great quickly. ideas. I think everybody's excited about about I their so. ve fall veggies. So that's I super. am too. That's right. So come on in and get some. We're, we're ready for you. Next week uh, we'll be back talking about uh, enjoying your cool planting in the that's cool right. time of year. We'll so talk about let this you think about that. <laughs> See you next time. Be cool. <laughs>